Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is look at porting uh, models from Mudbox to Maya for rendering in Arnold. And more specifically, we're going to look at the process of using displacement maps, both ordinary displacement maps and vector displacement maps. Now, um, what I've done here to demonstrate this is I've basically grabbed the humanoid template in, um, uh, in Mudbox, and all I've done is I've added some subdivision levels, okay, so this was the original one, humanoid model, which was 2,000 faces, and I've added up to level 5, uh, five levels of subdivisions, um, which, uh, and the level 5 subdivision, um, uh, the level 5 um, version of the model has um, is exactly the same model, but with 2 million faces, okay? So this allows me to do my fine sculpting at this level 5, and that's what I've done, some sort of fine sculpting here, just as a demonstration, and I'll just use the wax sculpting tool and sculpt a stencil on there just to give me some fine detail sculpts that I can demonstrate in terms of moving to Maya. Now, the thing that we want to do is, what we don't want to do is simply move this 2 million um, uh, polygon model to Maya because it will be very difficult to work with, very difficult to animate, very difficult to actually uh, uh, manipulate the model in any way, and also very difficult to actually, uh, it will also take a very long time to render, and it will take a lot of memory to render it, okay? So it just it's just unnecessary to have that many faces. What we want to be able to do, what we want to do is actually take out one of these lower level uh, versions of the model, okay, so with a lower number of, uh, lower level of subdivision, uh, 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 subdivision version of the model, and then actually apply uh, a displacement map, use a displacement map to put those fine details onto a lower level model, okay? So first thing we want to do is export a lower level model. Now, often if you export the lowest level model, let's say the, the uh, 2000 polygon face model, the displacement map may not work. Sometimes it's better to actually just go one level up. So I'm going to demonstrate just using the level one mesh, but actually this would probably have worked just as well with the level zero. So I always encourage you to try the level zero, but if that doesn't work, you can use like the level one and maybe the level two if that's required. So what we're going to do is I'm going to select this level one uh, mesh here. So I'm just going to click on it and select it. I'm just going to go file, um, export selection, okay, and I'm just going to call it mudboxdemo.fbx, and I'm going to go save, and it's just going to ask if I want to replace it, yes I do, okay, and then I'm just going to pop into Maya and just import this, so I'm just going to go file, import, okay, and it's an FBX, I'm just going to navigate to where that is on my computer, so it's in demo, here it is, and then just import it in. I'm not using a proper Maya structure here for the purposes of this demo, just to kind of simplify things a little bit. And if I just turn on the hardware texturing, you can see that we've got our low level model and it's also ported over all the paint that we've put on there. But what we don't have is obviously that fine level of detail uh, uh, of sculpt that we've got here. And that's gonna come across in the displacement map. So in order to create a displacement map, what we want to do is we want to go uh, into UV and maps and go extract texture maps and go new operation. Okay, and then we're going to just select a displacement map to start with. So we'll do a displacement map first of all. Now, I wanted to take it from the level one uh, mesh. So I'm going to go right click on here uh, and it should allow me to go to select the level one mesh. Okay. Now that we've done that, what we want to do is I want to change my, so what we're doing is effectively here is the target mesh, so the mesh that the um, displacement map is going to be applied to is the level 1 mesh, and then the detail, the sculpt detail that we're going to use uh, that's going to be um, stored in our um, displacement map um, is going to come from the level 5 uh, mesh, okay? So the method we're going to use is subdivision. Now, if subdivision doesn't work, then go and use ray casting and try the various settings in ray casting here. But typically, if what you want to do is really use subdivision if that's working, okay? So I'm going to use subdivision. And um, the base settings in, May, in, in Mudbox for this tends to be quite low. So what I tend to want to do is push up the image size a little bit. So I'm going to increase the image size and then turn on some anti-aliasing. Now, 
if you're working with Arnold, so Arnold version 5, what you need to do is actually export the, uh, the displacement map needs to be a 32-bit floating point image. Okay, so you in this drop down here, you want to select 32 point FP. Okay, uh, if you don't do that, then you, what you'll find is it won't work. Then what we want to do is in our base names, in our base, what we want to do is select a format that supports 32 bit. So you can see a lot of these don't support 32 bit, and we can only really use TIFF and OpenEXR. Now, my preference is OpenEXR, so I'm going to select OpenEXR. Okay, and then give it a name. I'm going to call it. Um, I'm just going to call it uh, uh, disp, okay, EXR, uh, that'll do, and I'm just going to go save, and then finally just going to click the extract, and so what you'll see is uh, that May uh, Mudbox is going to work away here um, doing an extraction, so we'll just leave it to do that for a moment, I will pause it, okay, so it's nearly done, hopefully it'll just pop up very soon. There we go. So now the um, map extraction has actually now finished. So let's move over to Maya and put this onto our model. Now, what we want to do is, at the moment, this is just using, uh, I think it's just using a Fong shader. I want to use the an, an Arnold shader to do this so that I can apply a displacement map to it. So I'm going to go right click and go assign new material and then assign the normal Arnold AI, so that the, the standard AI Arnold shader, okay, or the AI standard surface shader that comes with Arnold uh, 5. Now, what you'll see is because I've done that, it's replaced um, the color with a uh, uh, with white, and it's and it's lost the painted texture that we had. Um, that could easily be fixed, so you just go right click, so to bring back the painted texture. I just let my computer catch up. Okay, so I'm just going to right click and go um, uh, material attributes and in the base color here I'm just going to go and select this tab here okay and I'm just going to select file and then in this file node I'm just going to direct it to the uh, the demo file that we've been working in the demo folder that we've been working in <coughs> sorry uh, and then what I'm going to do is just inside the mud box. So when I did the export, my FBX export, it would have created this mud box demo.fbx files here. If I click on there, there's a diffuse TIFF layer there. That's our paint there that I can grab. I can simply open that up, okay, and apply that to that, that layer there, okay? So that's my base color uh, brought back into my Arnold shader. Now what I want to do is bring in the displacement map. Now what I want to do is I want to go into um, Hypershade. So I'm going to click on the Hypershade node here, okay? And I'm just going to go onto the AI standard shader that we've just created. Okay, and what the hypershade, yeah, on the AI standard node that we just created, I'm just going to go graph network, so we can see all the nodes that make up this um, uh, this shader. Okay, uh, and what I'm going to do is I want to select the AI standard surface um, uh, SG say uh, um, uh, um, node here. So I'm going to select that, and in the and you can see when I select different nodes, they come up in the attributes here. So I'm going to select this one here, and in the displacement ma uh, material, I'm going to select this icon here. Okay, so this just allows me to apply a file to as a displacement material here. Click on File, okay, and then I want to click on. So it's added all these extra nodes. It's added this displacement shader and this file node that we can use on the displacement shader. I'm going to click on the file node. Okay, and that allow me to load a file in. Okay, and I want to load in that file that I just created. So I'm going to load in. I think I just call it disp exr. Okay, and you can see there we are. You can see all the details already in that displacement. So I'm going to go open. Okay, and uh, a couple of things we want to do is we want to make sure that we've put the filter type to off, and then the color space. Make sure that that is on raw. Okay, excellent. Now that we've done that, what we need to do, I'm just going to minimize that. What we need to do is make sure that our model is ready, uh, is, is, is going to have the appropriate subdivisions in order to support a displacement map. So I'm going to go right click. Uh, so I just need to select it. And in the attributes inspector, I want to click on the Arnold tab and 
scroll down to subdivisions and here I want to select Catmail Clark because that's kind of one of the more efficient methods and select I'm going to select three as the number of iterations okay so now we should be ready the only thing I need to do is add a light to my scene so I'm just going to go sky dome and I'm just going to alter my um, render settings so that uh, I can actually render it in full HD here we go close and then I'm, then what I'm going to do is just go into the Arnold render view okay and I'm just going to just zoom my camera into the detail the sculpt detail so you can see that okay let's see what happens so here we go so if we give it a moment it should render up I'm just going to pause it while it's doing that so you don't have to watch oh hang on it's, it's doing it okay and you can see in here that we are getting that detail of that sculpt. I can move this down. But you can see that we the displacement map's giving us that fine detail of the sculpt uh, that we created. Okay? So that's how to apply a displacement map. Okay, and it's quite, you know, it's it's subtle, but you can see it there. Um, that's how to apply a displacement map to a um, uh, 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 to a model um, to, to export a displacement map from the box and apply it to a model in Arnold. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at vector displacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a vector displacement, okay? And um, I'm just going to go. Um, so I'm going to go back to extract uh, the extract operation. I'm going to go new operation. So I'm going to go UV maps, extract texture maps, new operation. And what I'm going to do is uh, use vector displacement map. So I've just selected vector displacement map there. Again, I'm going to use level one. Okay, so I'm going to right click. Okay, and an important thing to do is um, is again increase the image size. Okay, I'm going to put some anti-aliasing on there. I might just go to four. Okay, and one of the things you want to do is in the vector space, you want to select absolute tangent. That's probably one of the more important things to do. Okay, again, we need to output this as a 32-bit floating uh, point, and I'm just going to go again, just go uh, click on this button here to set a file name. So I'm just going to call it uh, vector. Uh, Vector disp. And I'll just call it uh, version two, okay? And I'm going to save it as a uh, open EXR because that's the format that I, I tend to prefer, okay? Um, this is just a warning if I'm planning to use it as a stamp. I'm not planning to use it as a stamp, so I don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is click extract, okay? So again, you can see it's extracting there. I'll pause it while it extracts. Okay, so the extraction has been completed. So what I'm going to do is move over to um, there. Are, that's been completed. I'm going to move over to Maya. Okay, and now this model, this 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 geometry has already been set up uh, to use um, uh, uh, with to to support subdivisions because uh, from from what we've done previously. So I'm just going to go to the hypershade now. Okay, and um, we have a look at this I'm just going to maximize this so we can see it a bit more clearly uh, what I'm going to do is just change things around a little bit so I'm going to change this to a vector displacement so I'm going to delete this line here and then just draw a line there okay and what I need to do is load in a vector displacement file to support that so I'm just going to click on this so I'm going to click on the file like uh, node click on this little node here to load in a different file so it's the vector disp version 2 that I was interested in just give it a moment and you can see there we are we can see the vector displacement in there okay and um, this isn't really going to show off the ability of vector displacement it's well worth just googling vector displacement to see how powerful it is but it is very very powerful and it is also discussed in the uh, Arnold documentation as well in some detail okay so it's worth having a look at that now I'm just going to click on the displacement um, uh, node okay um, in fact, I want to click on the actual displacement shader itself here. And one of the things I want to do is in here, I want to select from the vector space, I want to set that also 
to tangent okay so again the um the the uh we're creating a synchronization there between the way that we created the um vector displacement match which was based on tangent and the way it's going to be utilized in unord is also based on tangents okay so with that it's set what i'm going to do then is do another render okay and hopefully you should see a similar result so i'm just going to go uh arnold view and let's render see what we get it's taking a little while so what I'm going to do is probably just pause the recording while it actually finishes the render okay here we are so it's coming in now and you can see here we are, we've got the displacement again, obviously this time using a vector displacement. Now, in both these examples, um, it may kind of appear that um, uh, that this is all a bit, um, that we're not getting the bump maps there. It is there, it's just I think the light in, in, our, um, in my light setup, which obviously I've just used the de default light setup, is kind of washing this out a little bit and possibly the material isn't really emphasizing the bumps enough um, I don't know whether to just try and select the sky dome if I go into window uh, outliner and select the sky dome and just bring down can I bring down that exposure a little bit There we go. To be fair, I think it's really the material that isn't really kind of pulling out the bump map. But the but the bump map and the detail is there. We just need to adjust the properties of the material. Okay, so that's how to bring across a displacement map and a vector displacement map from Mudbox into Maya uh, and use the Arnold using the Arnold uh, shader.